George Schroeder, welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I hope you're having a great afternoon, sir. I am. Thank you for the, the welcome. I was in Tuscaloosa earlier this week, actually. All right. Yeah, and you had a chance to spend some time with Nick Saban, I hear. Absolutely. Always enjoy the opportunity. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he's a lot of fun, and he's a guy that, uh, regardless of any question that you ask, generally he's going to try to find a way to answer uh, what you're looking for. And he did that with uh, the case, uh, the article that you published, about Nick Saban, you ask him about Central Florida. Sort of maybe describe that for those who have not had a chance to go to USA Today and talk about reading that. Yeah, well, please do. We appreciate it if you do. And if you'd like to, go go to the, your web, uh, your, sorry, your website, your, your newsstand, and pick one up, or 10. That'd be great. Um, but, um, yeah, listen, so it was a wide-ranging, wide-ranging conversation with Nick, and I was glad to, to have the opportunity to do it. And I want to talk to him about a lot of different issues. But about 10 days before that, I had, had written a story exploring UCF's claims on the national title and kind of why they, the whys and wherefores and what of that whole deal. And so I thought, you know, I've got Nick in a room here. I should at least ask him. And I didn't really know what to expect. Um, you know, sometimes guys will just sort of deflect the question and move on, and you can tell they don't really want to talk about it. Nick, I think, had, had some stuff he wanted to say. I mean, Here's what I know about Nick Saban. There's nobody better about getting a message out when he wants to get it out. And, and I, think he, I think he really wanted to say, hey, look, if you respect the system, um, then you should honor the system. And um, the system, of course, being the college football playoff. And that is the deal. You can argue, and he made this point too, you can argue about whether UCF should have been included and whether they have a fair shot to be included. But in the end, the system is the system. Everybody agreed to play by those rules going into the season, essentially. And so he took issue with them claiming the title. And that's essentially what the story was. And, of course, um, when Nick Saban says something of substance, people pay attention. And so, it, you know, it, at least in our little corner of the college sports world, it, it, kind of got, it kind of got some attention. Well, sure, and rightfully so. I and mean, we spent a lot of time talking about it, and uh, we were out at a – uh, golf tournament just a, a couple of uh, yesterday we were out there so we didn't have a right. chance to really connect with you uh, but I, d- I definitely wanted to reach out let me let me go back here for Scott Frost because you interviewed him and, and kind of right. walk us through that because I know that was posted as you said a couple of uh, maybe 10 days ago on usatoday.com yeah well so Scott and I've known each other for a long time going back to his days as an assistant for Chip Kelly at Oregon um, I really have a tremendous amount of respect for him I think he does uh, has really grown into a really good coach. I'm excited about what he's going to do in Nebraska. And what he accomplished at UCF in two seasons is amazing. And frankly, their season was a tremendous, unbelievable accomplishment to go 13-0 and and to win the Peach Bowl beating Auburn. I mean, that's, it was a great year. Um, and, you know, I think he has to walk a little bit of a fine line in that he doesn't want to take away from the accomplishment of that season by anybody or for UCF. And yet at the same time, what he told me was, if I had still been there, meaning if I if he hadn't moved on in Nebraska, I would not have been on board basically with all the the continuing celebration and the unveiling of a 2017 national champions signage at their stadium and all of that stuff. Um, because as he said, you know, the playoff winner is the national champ. I mean, that's uh, that's not a direct quote, but that's really close to what he told me. And you know, I I think. Frankly, that's pretty courageous for him to say because he's, you know, he's making, he's angering the UCF fans who are all aboard the, uh, the claiming of a national title. And um, so, you know, I, I actually appreciate him the willingness to go on the record and talk about that. Uh, it probably brought him a little bit more grief than he anticipated when he did. Um, I saw that, you know, now there's been a little more back and forth because now people have asked him about what Nick said, and they may well have mischaracterized what Nick said. Although I certainly tried to put it in context. Uh, and, you know, and so, you know, he took a couple shots at some of those retroactively uh, claimed national titles that, that Alabama suddenly had in the 80s from the back in the 40s. And uh, by the way, that's one of the things that a lot of people who do not think that UCF's claim is valid also think when you get outside sort of the Alabama bubble, they also think, but it is kind of interesting that, that Bama's the, the program that, that's, uh, that's upset with somebody claiming a national title like that. Um, I have to, I just have to say that I'm not trying to take a position there, but I do think there are a lot of people that find it a little bit, um, interesting that UCF's doing that to Alabama and Alabama's taking umbrage at that. 
So let me ask you, and I'm, this is an opinion-based question. You're a guy that's a college football analyst, college football writer. You've been covering this sport for a long time. I want you just to, to look at it and ask, answer the question. Central Florida, in my opinion, they had an amazing, a, a great year, awesome year, with you know taking down Auburn uh, in Atlanta, the Peach Bowl, uh, running the table. Yeah. But in some sense, I think they've almost devalued their season by running around here claiming these national title things. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, when I th- when I wrote that initial story we were talking about, the one from you know two weeks ago now, I talked to Gary Patterson, the longtime TCU coach, and before you know, it, we have a short memory, but it wasn't that long ago that they were in the Mountain West and uh, went to the Rose Bowl as one of those BCS Buster teams and beat Wisconsin and finished thirteen and zero. And he made the point: we didn't claim a national title, and they didn't. And you know what? That was a really good TCU team. They might have been good enough. Um, and I don't know how good UCF was. Um, I, I, they were clearly really good on the day when they needed to be and a very talented team, um, but were, you know, their schedule was not uh, like those of the other, play, of the, uh, the other playoff contenders. Um, yeah, I guess in answer to your question, I don't know if it devalues it, what they actually accomplished. I don't think it enhances it in any way, shape, or form. I'll say that, to, to claim a national title. I don't think that... I don't think that helps anything. But I also think this. I think it, it was just something they said, and then it kind of kept growing. And at some point, you might want to either take it back or tamp it down, and they haven't been able to do that. So you kind of it's, – it's almost like you're all in at that point. I think that's kind of happened to them. What do you think we can do in college football to give them, as far as the non-Power Five, a seat at the table? Well, you could go to eight. But the commissioners are not ready to do that and, and may not be for a long time. And by the way, if they were ready to go to eight, the Power Five commissioners are not ready to say, and one of those additional spots is going to go to the group of five's, you know, best best team, you know, however you want to qualify that. I assume it would be very similar to the way they choose them to go to New Year's Six now, um, the highest ranked, um, you know, conference champion from a group of five. Um, they're not ready to, to, to say that, okay, uh, We'll have three at large bursts because we've let the all five power five champs into this 18 format. And we're going to let you have one of those three every year. I don't think they're ready to say that. Should they? Probably. But um, I think there's a persistent thought out there from the, the power brokers in college football that most years that best group of five team is not one of the top eight teams in the country, much less one of the top four teams in the country. I think that's probably correct. George, you also had a chance to talk with Nick Saban about the sports gambling and the Supreme Court ruling that uh, came down to kind of give a lot of power back to the states on Monday. Kind of help us summarize what Saban told you. Yeah, well, let me just say this. I think, um, you know, I was the first person um, just by nature of the fact that I had a visit pre-scheduled to talk with him about that. And I think probably it being the next day, he didn't. And, you know, and this is unusual, Nick. I'm not sure he had everything formulated as to what he thinks. And, and he may not still now, but I, I heard his comments um, when he talked before the uh, before teeing off the next the next morning, I guess Wednesday morning in the Pro-Am. And, and it felt like he had formulated his comments even a little more since then. Or maybe I heard him on, on, on Feinbaum that afternoon. But uh, oh, I'm sorry, I brought up a, another station. My bad. Hey, no, um, absolutely a, a, no worries, man. A brand man. X radio show that, that you won't refer to now. Um, whatever it was, um, I thought he, he had had a little more time to think a little bit more about it, but I think what he initially said to me is probably still correct. And it goes for all of us. Nobody really knows what to expect at this point. And you only hope that whatever happens, and it's going to be probably a piecemeal thing, state by state by state. You hope that whatever happens doesn't end up having some negative effect on what he, he called the integrity of the game, quote unquote meaning it doesn't sort of lead to more opportunities for, you know, point shaving or providing inside information to people. I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen, but I think it's, I, I just think really that my takeaway from talking with him was he's a lot like everybody else. Nobody really knows what to th- what to think at this point, and it's going to be a while for we, before it shakes loose and we figure it out. And Nick Saban is one of those guys, as you said, he's still trying to formulate his thoughts. And I think when you and I and many others go down to Sandestin, uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll hear maybe a little bit different response. But he I always, think that's right. Yeah. yeah, he always has so much. 
Like, I remember when we started college football playoffs, he said, we're going to devalue the both system. And I thought, man, he's just being a, a Debbie Downer here. He's absolutely correct. We have devalued. Well, it has devalued the bowl system. There's no question. Um, and I don't know that it's devalued the regular season, but it's definitely caused a um, – bowls don't mean as much. Not just – and by the way, by that I mean any tier of bowl you want to talk about. Um, so, yeah, no – and listen, he wasn't alone in that assessment. And it didn't really matter if he was right and everybody else was right or, or not that the playoff was going to happen. And I think it's sort of inevitable, too, that one day it's going to go to eight. And we don't know what the unintended consequences of that will be. You know, I assume it'll further devalue the bowls, but it will potentially they're not wrong when they say it may devalue the regular season. I think that's possible, too. And yet that doesn't mean we're, you know, that doesn't mean that we're not going to eight anyway. I think we will one day. George, is there anything else coming from the conversation that you had with Nick Saban? Well, there's a few more things coming, but okay. I haven't published them yet okay. in answer to your question. Sure. So, no, and know, I, don't, I don't want you to discuss them. I, I, right. I, well, yeah. we, listen, I, I talked to him on a few different topics for some different stories that will be, you know, we're, we're trying to, to, to survey a bunch of different voices in college football on uh, that will come out later this summer. And but I also there's going to be a Q and A format that will come out here sometime over the next few days oh, wow. that will touch on a lot of the different things we talked about. So, I mean, let me say this: it was a, a delightful conversation. Maybe people don't usually use those terms with Nick, but he is such a thoughtful guy, especially when you get him one on one. And those those opportunities are not, you know, every day, obviously. Uh, that uh, I've always enjoyed the opportunity to interact with him, and I appreciate his graciousness in, in, in doing that because he's one of the better quotes, more thoughtful, more reasoned quotes that you'll find in the game. What do you expect from Alabama in the upcoming season? Oh, I expect them to be really, really good. They, look, they obviously lost a lot of people, um, but I've said this a lot of times. Alabama um, is a lot like USC was in the previous, in, in, during Nick, Pete Carroll's run there in the 2000s only probably more so now they when they lose players they kind of replace them like a shark replaces teeth um you know what's going to happen with quarterbacks I'm, I'm like everybody else that's that's sort of the the and that is a big deal and, and nick will do his best to tamp that down but that is a big big deal to try to figure out what they're going to do and then you know what does the guy who doesn't win the job do and when does he do it i assume at some point he transfers but when would that be um you know, but I expect them to be really good again. Uh, you know, they've got uh, – there aren't – they've reached a point where there aren't many teams on their schedule that are competitive with them, to be quite honest. This is a year um, when, at least on the outset, you catch Louisville at exactly the right time post Lamar Jackson, so you can't get one of those mobile quarterback goes wild on you type of game. Uh, you know, if we fast forward all the way down to the end of the year – You've got Auburn coming to your place. That's not a bad way to be. Um, you know, because of the SEC schedule, uh, you're not going to see Georgia in forever, um, which that's a sticking point, by the way, for Nick. Uh, and so to me, it looks like you're looking at a, a team that the expectations of being back in the playoffs and maybe winning the whole thing are, are right on point. I don't know that you ever can say somebody's going to win the whole thing, but if you want, if since we were talking about sports betting, there may not be a sure bet in college football, nothing's 100%, then Alabama at least reaching the playoffs. George, what did you say was a sticking point with Nick Saban? I, I think I may have uh, maybe missed He that. doesn't like to – he would like to see a nine-game conference schedule. You know, he said that before. Oh, sure he is. Right. Schedule. And, but he can't get and help with it. He, he would can... like that, that to include – and by the way, it's not just that. It's even within the eight-game schedule, the way the cross-division schedule is set up, you have the one permanent, and then you rotate through – on two-year cycles, the other six schools from the other division, which means that you don't see these programs for years and years and years and years and years, um, unless you happen to meet them in a title game. And so if you go to a nine-game schedule, and if you could somehow change the, the, the format of the cross-divisional stuff, you could actually see these schools more often, these schools from the other division. It's almost like two separate conferences, except, except in Alabama's case, they play Tennessee every year. Otherwise, those other schools might as well be in a different conference. And Nick, Nick doesn't like that. And um, I'm, I'm, fully, I'm not always aboard with everything he thinks, but I completely agree with him on that. I completely agree with him on the idea of going to a nine-game conference schedule. 
I know why they're not going to do it, um, but I think it would be great for the fans and for the cohesion of the conference. You can connect with George Schroeder simply out on the Twitter account at George Schroeder, USA Today, the newspaper or online, usatoday.com. He's written some in, some articles here involving Nick Say, but he said there's more to come. So we're going to be watching usatoday.com at usatoday.com. Click his name and you could actually go to all the different things there uh, that George has written about uh, around the game of college football, national college football. And George Schroeder, thank you again for spending a couple of minutes with us here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, hey, glad to do it. Thanks for having me on.